Welcome to episode. 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 Welcome to episode 407 of Fly Away. Over the past few years, we've been reminded time and again how much the world relies on travel. From supporting local economies to learning about new cultures, the experience that travel provides helps to make our world smaller and bring us closer together. Here at Outlander Travel, we've been proud to be a small part of bringing that to you through our weekly podcast. If you'd like to see what we're talking about, be sure to check out our YouTube channel by searching for Fly Away Podcast. My name is George, and this week I'm joined by fellow Outlander Travel agents Elizabeth and Lindsay. Ireland is one of the most popular destinations in Europe for Americans. There are several reasons this could be true. Flights are fairly short between the East Coast of the U.S. and Ireland. Flights tend to be fairly inexpensive between the East Coast, and an amazingly high percentage of Americans can claim some sort of Irish roots in their family tree. You can look up the science on that data. We know it's true. (laughs) <laughs> Recently, Elizabeth, who has absolutely zero trace of Irish ancestry, went back to Ireland for her second time ever, this time exploring the northern reaches of the island, including Northern Ireland and the northern area of the Republic of Ireland. Instead of exploring on her own, she opted to take an escorted tour with CIE. As a solo traveler, this is a very popular way to go, so she wanted to see firsthand what it's like. So tonight we will hear about her itinerary and her experiences on this mystical journey so let's get started so it's funny that you wrote that intro because um, I am actually third generation I think removed from Ireland my great grandmother was from the Porta Down so my mom's oh. done genealogy and she knows exactly where they lived and and everything in the little town so we've always talked about going over there to dig up and see if there's any of our relatives still living over there but I haven't made it yet but, so super common and i think Lindsay and i've talked about this before Lindsay, you're like midwestern so you should be all like scandinavian right but you, you've got some irish too right i got a little bit irish but i was surprised to find that i was like 37 percent finnish oh well wow. that's not surprising I'm finland though. and i don't uh, uh, yeah i don't know anybody in my West. family who yeah but germany and i, I would have assumed like germany and things like that because we've got a lot of german sounding names in our family but Anyway, Finland. Yep. Who would have thought? Yeah. No <laughs> Irish. A little There's bit of no English, Irish. a little bit of Scottish. So it was supposed it may be some Irish, but nothing comes up on 23 and me. Nothing. Zero. <laughs> Zilch. Just None. got that. I just got that that Irish last name, that Kennedy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's all I got. There. That's kind of why I thought, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, the tour the actually the tour was not what I wanted to do. I'll just be perfectly honest with you. I wanted to go to Scotland, but um, okay. Scotland was sold out. And um, so I was trying to time this with my Italy trip and tag it on. And so uh, I called CIE because I had a voucher. I was like, how can I go to Scotland with this? And she was like, well, can you go on this date? I was like, no, that's too late. I'd have to spend like a week in Europe just piddling around and and so looking at the date, she's like, well, we have this Northern oh, Ireland trip. Yeah, well, I was you know, going to say, yeah, that, yeah, there's the excuse you needed. <laughs> yeah, That's the excuse I use all the time. <laughs> from, from wheels up to wheels down, I was in Europe for about three weeks. And as a mom of two boys who are rapidly growing out of my house, I'm like, I that was enough. So, uh, but this, did, this trip did actually span my birthday. So I got to celebrate my birthday by myself in Ireland, which was, which was really nice, actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, so she said, well, how about Northern Ireland? Um, and I was like, oh, I haven't done that. And, and interestingly enough, um, the tour that Lindsay and I did years ago that we, um, we sort of handpicked things, I thought, oh, there's going to be these repeats. But as it turns out, I, the only thing that I repeated, there were two things, the Cliffs of Moher and Galway shopping in Galway. Other than that, everything else was different. I went to Dublin, which I'd done before, but I did different things in Dublin. So it turned out actually pretty well, even though it wasn't my first choice of destination. So still haven't gotten back to Scotland, but maybe one day. Yep. That's on my bucket list too. Yeah. I got to do it. Got to do it. So you took the tour called Mystical Ireland. Was it truly mystical mystical so i guess i don't know why they call it that because i feel like the republic of ireland was more but i do think that there was some places that we went that are kind of mystical like the giant's causeway so i think that that's why they named it that 
Um, but if you're looking for it, it is Mystical Ireland. And then um, there's actually, I, I didn't realize this, honestly, till I got on the bus, proving once again that as a travel agent, I know everything and I know nothing. Um, the classic Ireland tour is the Mystical Island tour plus another week in the southern part of Ireland. So there were a lot of people on the bus with me who continued on after I got off the bus. They continued on to do the southern Ireland part, which would have been a lot of repeats of what um, what Lindsay and I had done when we went before. So, uh, so yeah, it, it, for most people on the bus, it was a two week trip, and it's kind of nice that it has that flexibility where they can sort of you know share the space. Um, an escorted tour is something that I haven't done a lot of. Um, my very first trip to, to um, to uh, Europe was an escorted tour, Perillo tours back in the days, 14 mm -hmm. nights in, in Italy. And um, so that I, you know, I did the motor coach tour and I definitely liked it for what it was. Um, a lot of people poo poo a motor, motor coach tour, but you can, you, there is no way to see as much in a small amount of time. I mean, honestly, it is busy and there's, there's definitely downfalls to it. So I wanted to see the modern motor coach tour because a lot of vendors will tell us in trainings and presentations, oh, but we're different from your typical motor coach tour. I'm like, eh, but are you? So I really wanted to see firsthand. Um, and I was impressed. It, I will say that, I again, in a post-COVID world, they're not filling up the motor coaches. So had that motor coach had 50 people on it, yeah. I might not have liked it as much. I'm definitely a small uh, group person. Um, it was a full size motor coach with 25 people on it. And I, that was great. That was absolutely everyone great. had space. Everyone had space and nobody sat next to me. I was there as a solo traveler. The last thing I want to do is like squeeze in with some coffee person that I've never met before, um, you know, for close quarters. And, and you are on the bus a lot. Part of the way that they show you so much is you travel a lot. Um, it's nice because it's all taken care of for you. So you don't have to, um, you know, haul your stuff around, but it's still, you got to get from place to, from A to B, and it takes the same amount of time on a motor coach as it does in a car if you were driving yourself, so. Yeah, yeah. and this way you get to listen to the stories. Hopefully, you, yes. have good, you know, if you get a good guide, and CIA or is, take a nap. is known yeah. for that. A lot of their, <laughs> a lot of their guides have been with them for a long time. Yes, like, and see, yes, and CIE, and my guide was no exception to that, and CIE is the National Tourism or transportation department of Ireland. So mm -hmm. they, oh. they have this branch that is their tourism branch, but it, they run the trains. They run the, like, it's the, it's the department of transportation for Ireland. So, mm -hmm. um, and it, it, at first you think, okay, then it's a government thing and it's not going to run so well, but honestly, they know their stuff for sure. And, um, they really do specialize and you, you definitely have people who know the area, who know what they're talking about, who know the stories, um, for sure. That was my first trip to Ireland was with CIE, was a school trip that we did through CIE. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, they, having that, that local person really makes such a big world of difference. And if you have to compromise and yeah, you're sharing a space with some other people, but I wouldn't have gotten any of that. I wouldn't have known any of that, the things yeah. I learned. Well, and I will say I do go undercover when I do a trip like this. I paid full price for this trip. Um, and, uh, I did not tell anyone I was a travel agent until about five days in, eventually you get outed. Cause you know, somebody asks you what you do for a mm -hmm. living and I don't lie. Uh, but I try to avoid the truth for as long as I can. Cause I don't want anybody to know. And my guide didn't know as a travel agent until probably two days before the end of the tour. And her face was so funny. She, she was like, Oh, Oh. Oh, because <laughs> she had said a few things. She was very honest on the tour. Let me just say, yeah. uh, sometimes about home office. So uh, I just, yeah. I, it was, yeah, I was like, you know, she probably wouldn't have said that if she'd known, but I like that. I want, you know, it, sometimes when we do these trips and, and uh, as a podcaster, we, you know, we have to reveal when we get trips given to us or so when I don't have to do that, when I can be me and experience a trip just the way that anybody else would, I 100% take advantage of that. That's how I, I find myself in that situation all the time because I do a lot of solo travel and I'm always trying to make, you know, and whenever I can make sure no one knows that what I do because yeah. it does change how how they act in front of yep. us I think yep. sometimes unfortunately yep. and and I did do this partially as because I knew I was going to be a solo traveler and this is probably the most common way for a solo traveler especially a woman to travel is an escorted tour uh, because it is so safe 
Um, and I mean, you have somebody looking out for you. Um, but it's also interesting as someone who doesn't normally travel solo. I know, Lindsay, you're very used to it, although I'm sure you can attest to all of these experiences. But everybody looks at you kind of sideways when you show up at the first welcome drinks and they're like, what is her story? And they, they're they looking at your finger to check out if it's got a ring on it. And, you know, yeah. Some, sometimes it's that. And then sometimes it's invisibility. I think. <laughs> I think I, I get a little bit of both. I get a little bit of the side eye and I get a little bit of the, oh, we didn't even know you were there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> Depending exactly. on if I want to be social or, or not social at all, but. Exactly. Um, and I did try to, to draw, because I also, I'm an introvert as you guys know. And, um, so for me, part of this was I'm going to sit quietly and have my breakfast and read like I'm totally OK with that. And yep. so many people are like, don't you want to come sit with us? I'm like, mm, no, I'm good. <laughs> so I did the old let me have my coffee first, you know, um, and honestly, they were very lovely people. I was delighted to sit with them. But first thing in the morning, you know, let me just have my coffee and read my book that I never have time to read because I'm always working and um i'm a happy camper so yeah i i made the most of um, and i ended up spending and we can talk through the itinerary but i ended up spending my birthday pretty much by myself with a little bit of exception and people were very upset about that at first but then i think you know i said no enough that they were like okay cool really all right so <laughs> the the tour itself started in dublin it um, did now, what resort did you stay at? And does CIE give you different tier options depending on whether you want a luxury hotel or a standard type thing? Good question. It's like you're a travel agent or something. Wow. Yeah, no. So they don't give you choices, okay. at least for this tour, they didn't. Um, there are, I will say there are opportunities to... Um, to take tours that are more luxury focused like if you want a tour of castle stays where you just stay in castles the whole time then you could do that for sure um this was more of, more of a budget product more of a sort of nice and and in some cases quite nice but not um luxury product um you know i did pay full price for this so i had to be able to afford it on my travel agent salary um but uh uh it was so they actually put us up at hyatt centric the liberties which if the it's it's called the liberties that area of dublin because it was originally outside of the city but it's actually right at um the um saint patrick's and it, it, and within walking distance of temple bar it's right where you want to be honestly um and uh i was very happy to be there it is a brand new hotel with the zero parking and every taxi driver and every bus driver that i encountered told me that <laughs> They hated it. They're like, why would you build a brand new hotel and not put any parking in? They were very angry about it. Um, I didn't care because I wasn't driving, but um, the hotel was very modern, lots of USB ports, lots of um, uh, lots of convenience. There isn't a whole lot like right around it. There was a little pub down the street that I did eat at um, one night uh, when I was on my own. But um, I went down to Temple Bar the other night. So I did a pre-night. Technically, we were only there for one night. Um, if you did that full tour that went two weeks, they're in Dublin at the end of the tour for a couple of nights. So there's not much time in Dublin at the start, which was fine by me because since I've been to Dublin. Um, but uh, I walked down to Temple Bar the first night and I went to the new Irish Whiskey Museum, which is fairly, it's brand new, really. In fact, my tour guide hadn't even been there yet. And she's very experienced. It's right at the university there where the Book of Kells and all that is. So um, fun experience. We did a whiskey blending. Wasn't really what I was expecting it to be. It was kind of um, very basic, not a whole lot of whiskeys to blend, but I learned a lot. Um, they also gave us a, um, a bottle to say we were promised we would have our own whiskey sample to take home. Yeah. I didn't drink Cute. If you're on YouTube and you can see this, this is what I got to take home. So Aww. I didn't drink any of it. Uh, it, it, they didn't give us much that you, and they, then you had to taste it, of course, because you wanted to see what it tasted like before you blended it. And then there wasn't much there to blend. So even if I had put all four together into that, it wouldn't have filled it. Um, so, eh, I mean, it's still worth going. I, you know, I had a great little tour. It's a little touristy. Um, I have no regrets about doing it, but definitely not. Um, the bar was fantastic though. I had, I had a great tasting in the bar on my own. Uh, so do recommend that. And you can go to the bar and not um, pay the admission to the museum. The museum is definitely educational, but you can, if you just have limited time, you can do that. 
Um, and then I went to a restaurant that my sister had recommended to me. She had been there on a business trip and had gone. It's a restaurant called Wild and it's in a hotel there not far from Temple Bar. And it was absolutely fantastic. It was really, really great. I had my first Moldovan wine. There were, they had a Ooh. wine there that was from Moldova. The um, sommelier was Moldovan. So she, was, she suggested it. And she's like, most people don't want to do it because it's taking a risk. I'm like, sign me up. Bring it, it on. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Loved it. Um, so had a great dinner there, but, um, then the tour really started the next day and it was really just a city tour by bus. And then we got out and saw the, um, uh, Dublin castle, which again, Lindsay and I did not do on our first tour as part of the organized tour. We did not go to St. Patrick's cathedral. We did not go to Christchurch. We did not do any of the stuff that we had done on the first tour, um, which was great for me. Uh, we also didn't go to the Guinness storehouse, so I didn't get to re replace my mug that my son stole and then broke. Uh, but, um, I did, uh, I did enjoy my time there. And of course the group that continued on the whole tour got to do that on their way back um, through Dublin. So uh, one night in Dublin, and then we went on to Belfast and we we went through um, uh, Down Patrick, which is basically, we were sort of following a trail of St. Patrick, the, um, a cathedral where he's buried, is the cathedral where he's buried, not mm -hmm. a cathedral. They didn't chop him up and bury him in lots of different places. Um, is there uh, very interesting. And then up to Belfast, which I had never been to um, and was fascinated by. It. Our first stop was very touristy. It was the Crumlin Road Jail, which was a big um, jail there and, and actually even factored into the Troubles, but it was now defunct. It was very much like Alcatraz, actually. It was that same sort of tour where they told the fascinating stories of the prisoners who were there. And, you know, it's mostly self-guided, that sort of thing, but, uh, but very interesting. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, we did the Titanic museum, which was also very interesting. I've only heard good things about it and it did not disappoint. You could also look out and see the studios where Game of Thrones is filmed. It is a big uh, warehouse, just like any movie studio is, <laughs> yep. but, um, we saw it. Um, uh, I took a picture for Chris. I haven't even shown him the picture because it's pointless, but, um, fascinating place, totally worth it. And everybody who I told I was going to Belfast to said, are you going to the Titanic Museum? Like that's apparently the only thing to see there. But while I was there, we also did a walking tour, which I'm very glad I did because they introduced sort of the closes and the, um, the little alleyways that you would totally miss if you just walked through Belfast on your own. You would think that if you went down there, you would be shot or mugged because you're an American and you're used to that. But these places are really adorable and um, the city was done up for pride. So I walked through several disco ball ridden hallways that are outdoors and uh, it was great. Um, went to the oldest uh, pub in Ireland. Well, no, I didn't go to Sean's pub, but the oldest pub in Northern Ireland, I believe, uh, continually operating. So um, it was great. And there we stayed at the Hyatt, which is basically on the water waterfront near a, um, near Conference Center. So I mean, the location was fine. I don't know enough about Belfast to know if I should have been in a different place, but enjoyed it. Cool. So uh, did you go up to, did you go see Kings Road? So when I, I did, when I did Northern Ireland, I did the Game of Thrones. I, well, I did a couple different things, but I did the Game of Thrones tour so that I could go see where all the, did you do the character read? Did you do the bridge when you were at the Giants Causeway? The room bridge? So we took pictures of it. Yeah. So, um, and, and to be honest, like our bus did go by some of those sites. I've never seen Game of Thrones. I read the books, but I never saw the show. So I don't know those places. So there was this famous church that was in Game of Thrones that we all took pictures of, but I, you know, I'm sure Chris <laughs> yeah. would recognize it if I showed it to him. Yeah. But we did take pictures of the bridge. And honestly, I looked at it. I was like, yeah, I'm not going there. Um, it's cool though. I mean, it's, the, it's <laughs> I an stood in story. line and walked all the way out there just to, to get to the part of where you got to go down these stairs to get on the bridge. And the stairs were too much for me. Like I couldn't yeah. even, I just looked and I was like, I can't. I can't do it. So I turned around and, and it's basically, um, George, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's more than a rope bridge, but not mo much more than a rope bridge. And it's what the fishermen would use to come back in with their fish. So it's really not, you know, but it's this huge tourist attraction because it is a beautiful like view um, and everybody wants to go across it. Um, but there's a place that you can stop up the road from it and take a picture looking down on it. And I was yeah. just fine with that. Yeah, but okay. yeah, <laughs> and we did go on to the Giants Causeway, which was a big bucket list for me. Um, it was 
the worst possible weather. The weather gods were not oh. smiling on me for this trip. And um, going out to the Giants Causeway in bad weather is just terrible. I yeah. try to be patty positive as much as possible when I'm traveling, but honestly, because you have to wait for a shuttle that takes you down there, unless you want to walk, which is even worse, because then you're just getting rained on for a mile. And you take mm-hmm. this crowded shuttle down and then the rocks when it's when it's raining are slippery, slippery. so it's really hard to even walk out on them and um it's cold driving icy rain <laughs> it's like not yeah. fun and like, it's not an fun. easy it's not an easy place to walk around even without yeah. the even if the rocks aren't slippery it's still a pretty dangerous place to be tooling around and did they I wanted to ask you did they when I was there they were everyone was talking about how they were going to put up railings to keep the tourists from climbing on the rocks they didn't do that no nope. there was a I saw I saw a dude in a yellow jacket and a first aid bag that was it and I mean it was slippery dangerous Oh. and uh, and yeah every american there was like this would never happen in america this this would be roped off you wouldn't even be able to get near it I mean, oh yeah that, that picture of thing it, is so. there were so many people who went so far out and so far up on top yeah, of could, things and i mean i climbed yep. a lot of stuff but i didn't go as as deep as i could have because i just i know myself i know i will fall and break something <laughs> So I'm gonna be, be little... that story that uh, yeah, yeah the, the paramedics be that about. travel travel insurance yeah. story that everybody uses to yep. warn people. Um, but yeah, yeah so... I'm, I'm so glad I went. I'm so glad I went, but it was miserable. And I actually, it's it, I have my big girl camera with me on this trip, um, which is why you haven't seen a lot of pictures because I have to actually download them and I haven't done that yet. <laughs> but um, I I left it on the bus for the and I didn't mean to. I got all the way to the visitor center oh, and I no. went, oh, I don't oh, have my shit. camera. And I'm so glad I forgot it because the weather was so it bad that no no picture I had taken Icky. would have been, yeah. So my iPhone can handle it. I was like, click, click, click. I did go out as far as I felt like I could go without becoming a news story. And um, <laughs> and then and it was so, so cold. I did buy myself a rain jacket because I did um, I did go to Italy first. And in Italy, it was like a hundred degrees every day. And in Ireland, it was like, 20 degrees every day it wasn't that cold but uh and I was not dressed at all for this weather so when I got to the visitor center it became very clear that a poncho was not going to cut it and so I bought a rain jacket I'm again glad I did yeah I made several good decisions um including going out there I'm so glad I did because had I just chickened out and been like oh the weather's too bad I'll be back one day no that's it's been on my list forever so I'm glad I went out. Everybody on the bus went out. We all complained about it for, uh, you know, a day afterwards, but we were all glad we did it. So yeah, that's usually the way it goes. I mean, it's hit or miss. So yeah. You can't control how the weather is anywhere, much less alone in Ireland. Well, but at least you and two hours it. later, it had completely stopped raining. So, you know, what can you do? You just yeah. shrug and say that's, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we were is. there when we were there and that's, yeah, that's just how it is. So um, again, no regrets, zero regrets. It was absolutely gorgeous. It's everything that I wanted it to be. It's everything that I've heard that it is. Um, I feel like I, I definitely checked something off the bucket list with that. And then we went to Derry. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you have ice cream? Uh, no, and I haven't seen the show, and I don't know anything about the Dairy Girls, um, and I hear it's hilarious. That city, other than the history of the troubles and um, the horrible, horrible way people treat each other over religion, which is just horrifying, really. Um, and I grew up during the troubles, and I'd heard about it. My parents were like, "Oh, you don't want to go to Northern Ireland. It's so dangerous there." And the IRA—I mean, that's real. That was stuff that was going on. And hearing like what the underlying causes of that were and just the pure hatred, um, it's, you know, in a country that grew grew up with slavery. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's just horrible. So, um, and that city, honestly, other than the history that it has um, and how well they've preserved it, it's a city like any other city. And we were there for one night and it was plenty uh, for me. We did, did you... we had a um, CIE stop at the Walled City Brewery, which I was really looking forward to because brewery. Um, and it it's it was fine. The beer was actually quite good. Uh, and they had a, a Vienna lager called Ultravox, which I laughed at. Um, but um, if you get that, then if you know, you know, Lindsay might be too young, but um, the, uh, 
it's, it's a brewery that actually serves a restaurant. So they don't really like, I couldn't buy cans of beer. You couldn't even really order pints of beer unless you were eating at the restaurant. We had a sampler. It, it's a CIE exclusive stop. Again, it was great, but it wasn't like what I expected from a brewery. Like I would have been ready to try everything and it wasn't quite like that. So. Did you have any free time when you were there to do like a black taxi tour? No. In Derry? Well, no. in Derry or anywhere in Northern Ireland, did you have? Mm -mm. In Belfast, in I might've had Belfast. some time, but they um, they did do a, um, a walking tour and I felt like I got a good amount out of that. Uh, it ended right before lunch and they had suggested a couple of places for lunch. And I did go to one of those places and it was fantastic. Um, there was a little bit of shopping that could have been done, but um, I also had to do some work and uh, I was by myself. So there was only a few things I really wanted to do. Um, and uh, yeah, so no, I did not do any separate tour other than what they offered me there. Um, but I got, I mean, I got a lot of history while I was there. So I felt pretty good about it. And then you I were did. off to Westport. Westport. Have you ever heard of Westport? Anybody here heard of Westport? Yeah. It's just the one in Connecticut. Have you? <laughs> okay, no. Nope. Not that one. So I had never heard of it. A little it. bit different. And so, yeah, so we headed off to it. And I, I, I read a few things before I went because I do a little bit of research. Um, and I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And that's actually where I celebrated my birthday. So I wanted to look up a few restaurants. And everything is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays in Westport. <laughs> Not everything. I did find some place to go, but most of the nicer restaurants, the Michelin star restaurants closed on Monday and Tuesday. And my birthday was on a Tuesday. We were there <laughs> on Monday and Tuesday. So I, I did make the most of that situation. We did actually on the way, we went through County Sligo and Mayo. And I just want to say we went right by class of castle, which is where the, um, oh, what's his name? Uh, the, remember the assassination of the uh, mountain Batten, the Duke of mountain Batten from, if you've seen the crown, that's his Irish castle where he lived. And then he was, he was assassinated on a boat, fishing boat. No, nobody. Oh, anyway, we went right yes, by I there. That episode. That yes. Or that moment in history. <laughs> so that actually, like we went right by that castle and she, just before she started talking about it, I'm looking at it. I'm like, that looks like that castle where, and sure enough, that's where it was. So they filmed it there, but also that's actually where it happened. Um, uh, so, uh, a little bit of history that I didn't expect to get to see a little bit of the crown uh, that I got to watch uh, and then uh, when we got to Westport we did a little walking tour and it turns out that Westport is a uh, musician's town like it's like a music town where there's lots and lots of professional musicians including um, a couple of famous people who have bought you know bars there and have their bars set up there so I had no idea about any of this going in and I was like okay this is actually maybe a great place to celebrate my birthday so I did find a place that would um, give me a reservation at like five o'clock at night because by the time I realized everything was closed on Tuesdays um, <laughs> I, I wasn't I, I nothing that I wanted online was coming up as open so I asked my tour guide on Monday night and she suggested a place but it was already booked for the next night so I went in at five I'm like it's just me I'll take that really crappy table right by the hostess stand that's fine I'll, you know um, so they let they were like as long as you leave by seven <laughs> thanks happy birthday to me I did not tell them it was my birthday um but it was a steak I had a steak um it was very delicious I had not had a steak really that whole time that I was there so um did that and then I went to a pub that we had stopped out on our walking tour and I listened to Irish music and it was fantastic I hope like for two hours I just sat there and they were amazing musicians like really really good uh I, I and I ran into two people from the tour who let me sit with them and then they left to go have dinner since I had gotten the like old person's five o'clock special and so um I was like I had a table to myself right by the band and and of course when you're by yourself this guy from New Jersey sits down at my table because there was nowhere else to sit he's like can I sit here I said sure he's with his wife he's like is that your boyfriend pointing to the flautist from the you know, the duo I'm like no I'm just a tourist <laughs> <laughs> no, just because I'm here by myself does not mean I'm dating someone in the band. Um, so it, um, it were you was, making uh, were you making googly eyes? <laughs> I mean, he was very talented, but um, no, no, no. And I'm also 51 years old, people. But whatever. Uh, so I um, I did find out at that pub the the whole and you probably know this, and Lindsay, I'm sure you know this, but you do not order a black and tan in Ireland. Oh. 
because it has military connotations that are not positive. Um, but they did serve us a special, which is actually a harp with just a splash of Guinness in it. Um, if you do, by the way, want a black and tan in Ireland, and but now you know you're not allowed to um, call it by that, you call it a half and half and they will bring you that, but you don't call it a black and tan. It is a little bit like ordering a stormtrooper in Germany. It's just not really looked on upon well. So, um, so yes, went on to Westport, stayed there for two nights, cutest little hotel. It's a great downtown area. And um, there's a very old manor house there that has been preserved uh, as much as it can be. Manor houses, honestly, are terribly built and bleak and mold and like all sorts of but they had the bells that you've seen in Downton Abbey and all the things that make you happy to see a manor house so really cool to hear the story of that family um, and then we went on to Shannon and um, we went to Galway on the way went to the Cliffs of Moher which we had great weather for the Cliffs of Moher again it wasn't even windy this time so I would have traded that for the Giants Cat Causeway since I've been to the Cliffs of Moher before but um it's beautiful, just like it was before. Uh, enjoyed that visit. And then we went to a medieval banquet and Lindsay and I had gone to a medieval back banquet last time. They rerouted us because we were originally supposed to stay at the hotel at Bunready Castle. That was uh, damaged in a fire during COVID. So it's not open right now. The castle is open, but there's nowhere to stay near there. So they rerouted us to this other castle that was great. And the like lead guy from the castle that um, Lindsay and I went to was there. So I got to chat with him. I was like, you don't remember me. He's like, should I? Do we have a child? Uh. <laughs> no. He's very, a very funny guy. So um, yeah, so great time, just like Bunratty Castle. Smaller, but the same sort of, um, you know, medieval, yeah. kitschy, but still authentic kind of place. And actually, I think that castle was in better shape even than Bunratty, which is in great shape. So did you stop in Sligo? you said you went through no not really there. not really we we did a couple of like uh photo stops but we didn't really get to spend any time there yeah it's definitely someplace I'd like to go back to the yeah that area that's where that wood carver we met Michael the wood carver who I'm sure is no longer making wood carvings but he had a butcher shop in downtown Sligo and then he retired but then he turned it pulled all his meat out and started carving wood these beautiful intricate wood pieces of art yeah, I, 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 I had a great time in Sligo. I, I really liked it. Yeah, in Ireland, I didn't do much in the handicraft area. We did see the the weaving. Um, I was actually very impressed that with CIE, a lot of these guided tours will sort of force you into shopping stays. They're obligated to do so. And um, these were, there was always something else close by that we could do mm -hmm. with a couple of exceptions. The, the weaving place was really interesting because they're still hand weaving things. And then they served us Irish coffee, which always warms you up to uh, buy something. So mm. I appreciated that. Um, and the sheepdog, uh, we, when Lindsay and I went before, we had a sheepdog demonstration, which was fine, but I had trouble hearing anything. It wasn't really very well organized. This one, we had the little hearing things. The oh, little, you had the headsets? Um, yeah. Yeah, the headsets, but it was pouring rain again. So as great as those dogs were, there's only so long that you could stand outside in the pouring rain. The dogs were great. They were like, whatever, rain on me, that's cool. <laughs> but then they took us in for um, hot tea. And honestly, I have never been a black tea person. I've, I've only rarely started drinking hot tea at all. And they served us the best cream tea with clotted cream. And you know, as soon as I got back to the United States, I'm like, where can I get clotted cream? I started looking it up. I'm like, I got to be able to find it somewhere around here. I can only get it at Whole Foods and it only comes in a little jar like this, but I'm addicted to um, black tea now and like black cream tea. tea. Clotted like, cream. Yeah. 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 Yep. I love so. tea. That, oh, did, you, so did you bring home tea? I did not. I didn't really have an opportunity to buy any. So as soon as I came home, I bought some Irish breakfast tea. It, honestly, there was nowhere that we stopped where it was like where it was a thing been. where I could do. Yeah. And, it, and that was so late in the trip. So, but I did, um, I have studied up on tea since then and I've bought um, a good amount of black tea and um, and I have bought the clotted cream. Um, I can get fresh scones at our French bakery and, um, but I can't do that like every day or else I'd be, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't fit on my screen anymore here, but, uh, but I, I definitely, and Chris was intrigued. He was like, okay, I've heard of clotted cream as most of us have, but I didn't think it would actually be good. I'm like, no, try it. So he did. He was like, oh, this is actually, this is pretty good. Like, there's really not much to it, but because it's 
in the in Ireland, it's and anywhere else other than the United States, it's not pasteurized. That's why you can't really find it here. But they do have a pasteurized version that's a British import that they make for us us Yanks who can't take our unpasteurized dairy. So um, and it was it was actually quite good. I'm not complaining. It's unlike you know cheese when it's meant to be unpasteurized and it's actually pasteurized. That's not as good, but. Um, so no, it was a great trip and I would recommend an escorted tour to anybody. It, um, it definitely was busy and exhausting in many ways, but I saw so much and as a solo traveler, so great, so easy. Um, and I did meet people. I actually was social. Wow. I was nice to people, but then I could also like just be by myself sometimes too, which was nice. So highly recommend. Yeah. Glad I did it. And I, I will probably do another CIE tour. Yeah. Great. I think I would I would do another CIA tour eat too. They're, they're very, very solid product for what it is. You get your money's yep. you get your I think you get more than your money's worth. Yep. That. And that's on Scotland because what could be better than seeing Scotland with an Irish guide? <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta be amazing, right? <laughs> gotta be. I, I want to go with on that one because I think <laughs> Yeah, I, that's got to be fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Well, that's our show for this week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Please like our Facebook page, rate us, and be sure to tell your friends about us. You can find our previous episodes on the podcast page of OutlanderTravel.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube. On behalf of Elizabeth and Lindsay and myself, George, thanks for joining us this week.